Good morning, everyone. Happy Tuesday, middle of June already. Amazing, and summer school's underway and all of that sort of thing, so we look forward to hearing all that you have to share this morning, Mr. Superintendent. But for, before we begin that, if you would all stand with me, please, for the pledge. may be seated. And we have a lot to be shared with us this morning, so we will move right into our items, Mr. Superintendent. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning to the board, and we have staff here this morning. Good morning to them as well. Um, we have two presentations today. First off, um, we've got a new project. We're calling it a diversity project that uh, just kicked off really in HR. And I uh, really wanted to uh, share this with the, uh, with the board. It's a um, fluid project. It's a work in progress. But I think you're going to be impressed with that. So um, I'll call up Mr. Sanchez and Dr. Sanchez. Do you need help, Dr. Prince? He's got it. He's got it. Good morning, uh, Madam Chairwoman, Holly, uh, board members, Super and Chair, uh, Superintendent Gent. It's my pleasure to present an update on the diversity project. We've been working on this project for about three months. And uh, before I get started, I want to thank you for your leadership because this project was inspired by the courageous conversations that we've been having um, in our board workshops, um, in our board meetings this year. And I know our board have always had these courageous conversations, but they've become a little uh, more focused given the times that we're in nationwide. Uh, our, essentially what our diversity project is, is a website <clears throat> where we have different diverse cohorts uh, that we've identified that we want to celebrate and represent that are affiliated with our school district or work uh, within our school district. We did start this uh, project off with uh, creating a vision statement and essentially the vision of this project is to enhance and promote the board and superintendent's vision of a diverse workforce in St. Lucie Public Schools that encompasses our diverse student population and community. This vision statement comes um, from my conversations with my immediate supervisor, Dr. Prince. Um, consistently over the past five and a half years, there's one question that he consistently asks <clears throat> all of his direct reports. And that's essentially what else can we do to help uh, the board, the superintendent, uh, to promote or enhance their vision, their initiatives, or their goals. So this is where this vision statement came from. Um, during our conversation, he tasked me with finding out what else there is anything we can do from HR perspective. And together, I got together with uh, our coordinator of retention and recruitment, Ms. Molly Dunn, and together we came up with the concept of the diversity project. Now, we've got a few goals that we're trying to accomplish within this project. Uh, number one, we want to celebrate the current diversity in our workforce. Uh, we've made some good strides. We know that we have a long way to go. We know that this, this is not the answer to or the solution to the overall diversity question that we're, we're having. But we think that this is a good building block, specifically when we start looking at uh, pathways for uh, black males and increasing our gaps with uh, employing more Hispanics in our workforce. We also wanted to highlight our historically black and community universities, our HBCUs, uh, highlight our Hispanic serving institutions, our HSIs, uh, our divine nine Greek fraternities and sororities, of course, we've got distinguished minority educators that we recognize every year uh, from the Night of the Stars. We have a very big retired educator community that is very actively involved in our school district right now. And we also have district diverse leaders that not only encompass the principals and assistant principals, but our school district being so large, we have numerous fields and professions where we have diverse district leaders um, as well. And then the last one is the community champions. This was a, a, a very recent addition 
um, from one of our board workshops. Uh, Mr. Ingersoll was having some conversation about enhancing and building programs um, to help um, our diversity. And then also Mrs. Richardson was having some dialogue about that we've got some living, breathing heroes that are walking among us today. We need to celebrate them and celebrate their achievements um, and celebrate the achievements that they've accomplished in our, in our community. So this was an, uh, an additional add based off of the conversations that you were having here. Uh, some of the benefits that we hope to achieve from this project is of course we want to enhance the board and superintendent's vision continue to help bring together a community and we've witnessed this we've had uh, over 150 people come in to take photos um, and then we've had about 12 to 15 individuals create uh, video content for us and you can see the excitement and anticipation um, as they were here it's a small community everyone kind of knows each other it's it's an, just one more reason for people to get together and then also get together for a good reason and celebrating our diversity in our, our school district. Of course, we want this to also be another avenue to build stronger relationships with our HBCUs and HSI institutions. And ideally, the, you know, one of the biggest goals is to, is to increase our diversity in our workforce. When we decrease the diversity in our workforce, since we're the largest employer in the county, we increase, we increase the diversity in our community. The photos and videos that we've taken, we're going to use these to recruit diverse candidates um, that look like them. And, I, and this is important um, from an HR aspect. When we are recruiting certain demographics, we know that, uh, especially when it comes to uh, the black community and Hispanic community, it's, it's more of a relationship-based link to the community when we're recruiting uh, individuals from, from these demographics. So this is a, another component that this diversity project will help us do um, because as people migrate to the page, they're going to see people that look like them. And I think that's a very important um, concept when you're considering moving to a new location. Um, is there, are there resources there for me? Are there people that, that, that I know that I can um, um, work together with, be affiliated with? Um, and so this web page helps us um, display that information to interested candidates coming to them. And I'm going to give you an example of that on the next slide of how we're going to use uh, these photos and videos to recruit. And of course, we want to continue to enhance building programs for our students, um, utilizing mentoring, leadership uh, with our diverse leaders that currently work here and our educators that work here, and continue to build career pathways um, for diverse uh, minorities that work within the school district, um, including um, black males and increasing our Hispanic um, leadership um, throughout the school district as well. Now, um, our HR department has a very um, unique, dynamic, and innovative way of recruiting. There's, I don't know of any other school district that recruits the way that, that we do. Um, yes, we still use social media. We still go to um, colleges and universities to recruit and recruiting events. Now that everything's been opened back up, we still continue to do that. And we still hold uh, career fairs here at the district office. Most recently, we had one last week. But we recruit by brand. Um, St. Lucie Schools is, is a brand, and it's a high quality brand. Um, if you can see our results over the past six years, it's an exceptional high quality brand. And so what we've done is we've branded on different channels, um, whether it be YouTube, um, and specifically using digital marketing. And we use concepts that are uh, consumer-based marketing, which is how large corporations are selling products to us now um, using digital marketing. And it's just to give a quick example, it's very similar to uh, when you're surfing the internet and you're looking at uh, clothing or something to buy and as you continue to change pages in the internet, that, that product you're looking at keeps following you. Uh, so it becomes almost divine intervention of, well, I need to buy this product. Um, and so that's, a, that's one of the concepts of our recruiting efforts. The other one is based in tourism marketing. And tourism marketing, um, if you look at the, um, um, how, how counties and states 
promote their tourism to come visit their counties or come visit their states. It's very similar because the brand or the county just kind of just keeps popping up into your feeds. And that's one of the ways that we, we uh, utilize our recruiting efforts. This is a photo of one of our, uh, in, one of our employees. This is Jewel Edwards. She is the first year teacher of the year. She's also a Promise is a Promise recipient, a graduate of Lincoln Park Academy, also a graduate of Florida A&M University and HBCU, and then she's also a, a Greek fraternity member of Zeta Phi Beta sorority. And um, what we will do is we will take this photo and we will, we will create a digital fence around Florida A&MU and we will push this photo content onto anyone that has a cell phone or a laptop device. As they're surfing through, if they live within this five mile radius or they're on campus, our content will be pushed to them. Once they click on this photo, it'll then bring them back to our diversity page and directly target specific individuals from our HBCUs once they're interested and click on it, they'll be able to come to our webpage and then get more information and again, be able to see the diversity that's, that's uh, contained within our school district. Another example would be, uh, we're going to use videos as well to do this. And this is just an example of one of those videos. Hi. I am Jewel Edwards, and I am San Luis Public Schools 2021 Outstanding First Year Teacher of the Year. I currently teach eighth grade U.S. history at the Creative Arts Academy of St. Lucie. I graduated from Lincoln Park Academy in 2018 with an Associates of Arts degree and as a Promise is a Promise scholar. I'm grateful for Promise is a Promise because not only did it give me a career, but it gave me the opportunity to invest in the students the same way my teachers invested in me. After high school, I attended and graduated from Florida Agricultural and Mechanical University, where I also joined Zeta Phi Beta Sorority Incorporated. Zeta Phi Beta Sorority Incorporated is a community conscious, action oriented organization whose goal is to put our community first. Going from a student to a teacher in San Luis Public Schools has been a phenomenal experience. I love working in San Luis Public Schools simply because we're all dedicated to the same cause ensuring the success of each student. And that is why you should join us in St. Lucie Public Schools. It's a good video, right? Very powerful. Now, when we look at our um, website, again, as Mr. Gent stated, this website is probably about 80% completed. We still have some more photos that we want to take. Um, and we still have some videos uh, that we've scheduled with some um, community champions. And um, we've got some of them, but we're, we're still waiting to complete the content of this. But the main page essentially is our diversity page. Uh, it gives our vision statement. We do have the facts at a glance video embedded. So as soon as they land on this page, they'll be able to click on that video and obtain the information of what our schools are like, what our graduation rates, rates are like and just obtain more information about our school district. The second page here is our diverse leaders. Again, um, just want to emphasize that, you know, our school district not only encompasses uh, diverse leaders of principals and assistant principals, but we have managers, coordinators, um, directors uh, that are diverse leaders that currently work within our, our school district as well. Our diverse educator page, this page was, uh, we created this page, um, let's let it load here. When we speak about diversity, you know, we, we speak about diversity and inclusion and there are people that are uh, minorities but they don't identify with either being black or Hispanic. Um, so we did create a, a separate page to be able to display um, our other diverse educators that work within our school district. Of course, our distinguished minority educators, and these are the individuals that we celebrate every year at the Night of the Stars. Again, you can see the video of Ms. Jewel Edwards embedded in here. Um, and then also our recipient award winners, uh, distinguished minority educators of the year finalists, 
and the winners along with the uh, principal and assistant principal. Like I said, we have a, a, a very robust and dedicated retired educators that actively participate within our school district. Uh, we did ask them when they, when they came to take their photos or videos if uh, to wear their Greek apparel or the apparel from the university that they graduated from. And so you'll see everyone's uh, dressed just a little bit different, but you'll also see some uh, familiar faces on here um, in this page. Our HBCU alumni page, uh, we wanted to ensure that this was in here as well. Um, this page and uh, specifically our Divine Nine page, again, these are relationship-based, um, um, a little more relationship-based. So we wanted people to, as we promote their videos and their photos around their schools, that they're able to we're able to take the video of the people wearing the apparel of the school, which helps make a quicker connection, uh, which will also help uh, generate more traffic back to our website. And so everyone that's in here uh, is wearing their school apparel. We also have uh, another one for the HSI, serving the Hispanic Serving Institutions, to make sure that we're able to display that we, uh, we have uh, individuals that are graduating from Hispanic Serving Institutions. Um, and uh, FIU and also um, IRSC are, are, are big HSI serving institutions as well because they have high graduates of uh, Hispanics there. Our Divine Nine page, uh, like our HBCU page, is, is very critical. Um, again, because we want to display that there are resources for you. When we look at these two specific groups, there's individuals that you have working here already. And you can see that we wanted to make sure that we have gave every um, uh, Greek organization their own web page. Um, this web page will, as we're finished, will contain the links to their local chapters, their main chapters, and then when we're done, um, direct contact information for those presidents of those chapters. So if they have questions um, or they have um, any kind of needs that they can directly get in contact with these individuals, and it's just another resource to have for them. These are the uh, distinguished gentlemen of the Alphas. also our beautiful kappas in pink and green as well. And then our last page is our community champion page. Again, this is just another uh, resources, resource based off the conversations that you were having, that we have some uh, living, breathing legends um, that are, are, are still around that we need to celebrate. Uh, we need to celebrate their achievements and their accomplishments, not only in the school district, but in the community. And, um, and we also have champions that are out there that may not work for the school district, but they support us um, and they support us heavily. Um, like we've got Larry Lee, Sean Boyle, and, and Will Armstead on here too, good friends to the school district. I will show you this one quick video here of Queen Townsend. My name is Queen Townsend, and I worked in the school system of St. Lucie County for 37 years doing various things as a teacher, as a principal, as an assistant principal, and I retired as assistant superintendent. Over those years, I saw many changes in St. Lucie County, but the one thing that was constant, St. Lucie County was all about children. So if you have a love for children, a desire to make a difference, 
and a desire to be a lifelong learner, as well as continued growth and advancement, St. Lucie County Public Schools is the place for you. So our next phase um, will be to continue to get more people to get their photos, um, videos, um, but we also want to continue to, one, make sure that we have career pathways for uh, our minority employees, including black males, um, and also promoting our biggest gap right now, which would be uh, Hispanics um, diversity in our, in our workforce just by creating mentorship, coaching opportunities, deliberate identification of Hispanic and black applicants um, for talent and future leadership positions. And I do wanna thank a few people. This was a, uh, a very comprehensive project that crossed numerous departments. Um, it took a lot of resources. I do wanna thank um, Dr. Prince for championing this project. Um, and for ensuring that we had the resources needed to, to complete it. Of course, um, Dr. Kevin Perry and Latricia Woolard, who was on our, our, our committee of four, you know, I, I knew that the two of them were embedded into this community, but I just didn't know how deep um, that it went. They were instrumental in bringing in um, our photos for our HBCUs and also our Divine Nine. So without them, this, this this, we, we wouldn't have completed this project, so I just want to thank them. Um, of course, Molly Dunn, who is our coordinator of retention and recruitment, who with her, her and I created the concept of this project. Um, and in just a few short months, she'll be graduating with a master's degree in HR. So she's well on her way to being a HR professional and an HR leader. Uh, I want to thank Lydia Martin and Terrence O'Leary because both of their departments um, dedicated a lot of resources to this project. Uh, specifically, Ed, Edward Morales uh, created the print material that we had displayed up front in front of your offices if you came in and saw that so that we had uh, material and something for individuals to come and see when they come and take their photos or do their videos. And then, of course, I want to thank Samantha Davis because she had put the website together and embedded, embedded the photos, embedded the videos, um, and this was a lot of content for her to um, not only create, but to embed and to make it look, make it look good. And with that, um, thank you for your time, and I'll open it for any questions or comments. You want to get that microphone up there? Absolutely thrilled at the work that has been done, and not just thrilled. I'm amazed at what great minds can do. And, and um, you know, we're all educators in some way. And this is what education is all about. And um, I want to thank the board for the conversations that we've had and the superintendent um, and your openness to discuss these issues and, and your several different places of what you have done. You know, this is important for all of our children. And uh, Dr. Prince, you know, you and I have been with that committee. We've got something we can really take back to them now. And as far as the work that we have done uh, in the community, I'm talking about a committee in the community, in which I believe <coughs> uh, Ms. Richardson, Ms. Hawley, and Mr. Gent was a part of that mm -hmm. conversation. Um, it was a virtual and some of you out there, Lydia, you were a part of it. Uh, Helen, you were a part of it. Uh, I just, um, I'm thrilled. You know, I'm at one of those moments right now, I can stand up and give you a no standing ovation. It's inside of me, but I'm gonna contain myself. But uh, I thank you, I thank you for your work. You were part of the, com you were yes, on that virtual as well. Yes. And so we've met since then, Dr. Prince and I with this group and, um, and we've been talking about ways that we can implement to improve, you know, to simply improve where we are now and to go to another level. 
And I really do appreciate you going back and, and taking the whole of this in HR. And each and every one of you, um, thank you. Thank you. Madam Chair, I got a point real quick. You know, it's a, a great job. I'm really impressed and I learned a lot. I have one question for you, and I don't want to put you on a spot because you may not know. Uh, but this has always concerned me uh, through the years, even when my own children were in school. I'm talking about the high schools now, just in the high schools. Uh, Dr. Sanchez, can you tell me how many male educators we have in the high schools? Maybe not the number or percentage of male, I'm talking about teachers now, mm -hmm. teachers in our, our six high schools. How many are male percentage? That's a good question, Mr. Kelly. I'll have to go and uh, pull that data and I'll be able to get back to you with that. I just don't know it off the top of my head. I'm sure it's very, very, very small. And okay. <laughs> Probably, sir. Yeah. 77% of educators are females in the United States now. I can't hear you, Wayne. 77% of educators are females in the yeah. United States, I believe. But, but in our, I want to know. Yeah, I don't know. I, we don't have that specific yeah, okay. information. We'll get it for you. Maybe, but it, our, but we'll, 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 we'll mirror that for sure. Maybe if we can, uh, not now, but maybe we can just, the three of us yep, get together we'll get it. and I'll tell we'll you get my it. concerns about that. Raphael, thank you. You and your team did a phenomenal job. Excellent. Thank you. I just said, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, this is, um, that's all I'm going to say. Thank you. <laughs> thank you to everybody. Thank you so very much. I want to make a comment about Dr. Prince. Uh, within these meetings that we've had from the beginning, he has been so open and, and willing to hear and listen and share and it's, you have been quite a blessing in this group, and I just want to honor you and thank you for your work. All right, so um, we should probably end it there and call it a day. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, let's, I, I do, you know, we've, let's clap. Let's, this is a great job, that was fantastic. Uh, everybody in the room has had a part of that, and this is very, very unique. And, um, you know, when you see something new that you haven't seen before, you know, and it's right here, and, 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 the, and, the, and, the, and the, um, the brains behind it, it it's, a, it's local, and, and, and including the folks, it's just phenomenal, and very, very proud of that, and proud of uh, the work that they have done. I didn't mean to, to take over, um, Mrs. Holly, before, if you had anything to say. Okay. Um, that's the clicker and that's the thing. All right. So we're going to move on now. And for, um, for uh, our two new board members, what we do each year at this time in, in June is kind of do a state of the, uh, the district of, of the year that we've had. And um, this year it's going to be a little bit different because this year was different. But on your, um, on your table, you should have found a, a book that looks like this. I'm going to call it our yearbook. And, and you guys can have them signed by staff afterwards like we do in the high schools. They'll find their picture and, and sign it. But really what this represents is uh, the year in review. And I've always done it at this time, but we've never really um, come forward with, with a document that's this, that this, that's this detailed. So what I'll do today is do kind of a summary of that. The summary is really in your PowerPoint presentation. But um, I encourage you, and I know some of you are already looking through that, to look through it because this is where we get into the weeds. Um, this was um, made, by, uh, this was developed by our own team here. You saw Edward Morales on there who is, um, who runs our print shop and Lydia's shop and the different departments. So this was done with, you know, right here in St. Lucie County. What we'll do with this as well is we'll share it among our, our schools, we'll share it among our community partners. Um, at the very beginning you'll see uh, you all are in there. We've got some speeches, we've got our guiding pillars, then we've got our table of contents. And then what I'm going to talk about today, um, it's in here in more detail about what we did. I don't want to underscore 
the past year that we've had. And um, we met with our principals two weeks ago. Uh, Jack and, and, and Troy were able to, to attend that. And um, I think they were able to really sense the energy and the enthusiasm of our principals. And we kind of celebrated and recognized our principals and the accomplishments of the district um, at that time. But we didn't go into the detail I'm going to um, today. So if you have your PowerPoint or it's going to be up on the, um, I got to do two things here. I got to push it and here we go. So what I do each year is I come up with, with um, a group, of, uh, a set of goals. This year there were three goals because at this time last year, we had been out of the schools when uh, spring break came. That was it. When spring break came and our kids went home, they didn't come back until August. And they didn't come back till the, I believe it was the third or fourth week in August. So our students were really gone for almost five months. And we had gone to a totally virtual teaching platform which we had pivoted literally within two weeks to do that. So, um, and that was something that was done across the state of Florida. So when I set my goals up at this time last year, it looked different than any other previous year because normally my goals are associated with academic performance, um, different areas that we need to work on or areas where we need to, to tighten up. And uh, so this year was a little bit different with the goals there and you can see the three goals and I'll go over those. Um, with you, the first one to ensure a robust instructional delivery system, whether in person, virtually, or as a combination of both, because a year ago today, everything was virtual. We still weren't really had clear direction from the state as to what we were going to be allowed to do or not to do. And as you were aware, then we were able to offer um, two platforms or two learning um, instructional uh, delivery systems, one in person and one virtual. Uh, naturally, and everybody remembers the safety and health uh, for all of our employees and what we were going through and continue to go through that we're not going to we're not going to st stop doing these because uh, we're in a better place right now and then goal three to uh, strengthen uh, really our, our SEL our social emotional well-being and uh, mental health needs for our students if you remember last year at this time the academic piece was second we were more concerned about the social emotional needs of our students because we didn't see them we couldn't see them every day our teachers do a remarkable job and our principals of looking at the students and making sure they're okay well, when it's a virtual world, and, and uh, Dr. Mills, you were, you were part of that virtual world for a year, it's hard for the instructors to really see the students and, and what's going on. There's, I'm sure somebody's done a blooper of, um, of online learning in, in the home and some funny things that we've seen. But it uh, was, a, was a, a tremendous effort by our, our staff uh, that's come together. And so that's what I want to talk about here for the next few minutes. Within the first goal, and I know that's small to see, but it's in your, um, it is in the handout that you've got. We needed to really develop a, what we call an ICP, an instructional continuity plan. Uh, there's three components of that, content delivery, mobile devices, and then internet access. And so um, Dr. Wild Hershop, along with Terrence's shop, and other, uh, other, um, other, other, when I say shops, other departments as well, we really had to come up with an online learning system, an online learning um, um, for students that were at home. But not only that, but for the students that would be quarantined. And you all saw that each day of the number of students that were being quarantined and would go back home and then to continue their instructional delivery system. So it's easy to put on a couple of slides, but it was a mammoth, uh, gargantuan effort. And some of the other team are here on, behind me over here uh, with Kim Jay and Liz and, and, some of the, and some of the team as well. Uh, they developed 956 um, lessons for Canvas. We'll talk about that in a minute. They expanded our summer programs. We'll talk about that in a second as well. The uh, expanded summer school, we're in our second day of summer school. Yesterday we had approximately 74% of our students uh, show up for the first day. So that was, that's a good number because we've been out of school for several weeks now. And our executive directors uh, have been out in the school centers. I had a chance to visit six schools yesterday. Uh, I'll give a shout out to River's Edge. Uh, they had balloons up everywhere, and we wanted to make sure, not because your wife's the principal there, but it was, they had balloons up out in the bus loading zone, and you know, yeah, she didn't miss me. Um, and uh, it, uh, it, was, um, it was really cool, and then to go into the classrooms at the different school sites and see what they were doing. The kids were having a blast. Um, they were doing a lot, some of them were doing the STEM stuff, some of them were doing other things, because we want this not to be summer school. We really wanted to call it almost like a camp uh, where they're going to, we're going to, they're going to get the academic uh, support that they need, but we really want to do this for a place that they want. We want them to say that coming to school is the best part of their day um, this summer. So that started out um, as well, and we have uh, approximately 9,000 students. We'll have an update later on this week as to how we're doing. Um, moving on, training. 
For us to pivot and go completely to online, you can imagine the fears that parents had, but you should have, you should have seen the fear that even our own uh, educators have when we talked about going completely online for a while. And, and in order to help support them, we had to train them. And uh, you can see over 4,000 teachers and staff um, have been trained from my school during the course of the year. We did tutorials, we did bookings, um, hybrid models. I'm not going to read these to you. Um, the infrastructure, this is in Terrence shop. You know, I want you to look at those numbers there. Over the past year, we've relocated or re-imaged or deployed 40,000 laptops. We've purchased 20,000 new ones for K-6. Um, we've put out another five for um, employees uh, and 10,000 devices for students to ensure we have a one-on-one. -on -one. This is really where our first, um, the first phase of the dollars that came down from the federal government went. Another program that we have that we really haven't talked a lot about is what's called Broke Fix. You know when you get the, these at home, something's going to break, and uh, we serviced over um, 2,600 folks where they would come in on certain days right here behind the building, and it was like a drive through just like a drive through for, for McDonald's. They would pull up, our staff would take their computers, either fix it on the spot or give them another computer to take so the students wouldn't miss, would, wouldn't, wouldn't miss anything. And then uh, 1,000 phone calls a month from the technical service desk. Um, as well to help support our parents and community. I moved to goal two to provide a safe and healthy learning work environment. Uh, we developed safe, uh, a safe set of return guidelines. In here on page 10, you'll see, I didn't bring them with me, but on page 10, you'll see kind of an example of them if you want to take a look. Uh, the print shop was very, very busy in the communications department. And uh, many of these we shared with you at the previous meetings, but let's stay healthy together. Um, you know, and all the signs, the signage that we put up at the school centers, as well as um, our safe, our uh, return to school plan, which I think is about 73 pages long. So that was a, a very important piece with this. We have a COVID response team at each school center. That's the custodial coordinators, the area managers, working with them to make sure that our schools are clean. I, I, again, with goal number two, we were the, and I'm very, very proud of this because this was some, some heavy conversations behind the scenes. Uh, we we're, were able to bring in and make sure that our employees were vaccinated, those that wanted to be vaccinated. We were really the first in the Treasure Coast to do that. Now we have clinics for the students 12 and older through our uh, Florida Community Health and the uh, CDR Health as well as the local health department. We had a screening tool for our parents. We had COVID leads uh, at each school to manage the positive cases. That was a day-to-day -day, and you saw, you all would see the daily uh, updates that we would send you uh, and the tremendous amount of work that was done at our school centers to track the students down, to make sure that they were quarantined. All of that, you know, was a well-oiled machine, but the effort that went in behind it was just uh, unbelievable. Goal number three, to deliver the, ser the services of social uh, emotional well-being, SEL, and mental health needs. Again, to us last year at this time, that was more important than the academics. They're right there, one and two, but we hadn't seen our students, um, again, coming back in August for five months. So we had uh, new staff, new mental health counselors, um, guidance counselors, um, worked in and expanded with our, uh, our local agencies. We created a department of social and emotional learning, and you can see some of the things we implemented, the suicide uh, instruction, the signs of that, crisis prevention, mental health, youth mental health, positive behavior, um, equitable discipline practices, and uh, expanded health care with the district. So those were the three goals that I established um, within this document, within the yearbook, I'll just call it the yearbook. Um, you will see the details of how we accomplished that. Want to move on? We always talk about our graduation rates, and um, uh, most of you were able to participate in that. And you could see these are our unofficial numbers because we won't get our official numbers from the state until December or January. Um, and so our unofficial numbers right now, you can see that uh, everybody is maintaining where we are in the high 90s. I think what's important here is that uh, there's only three other districts in the state that have had uh, four consecutive years of 90% uh, percent plus in the state of Florida. Uh, it's a federal grad graduation rate, so you're comparing apples to apples, so we can, the whole state's compared the same way, the whole country's compared the same way, and you can see almost 20% increase over the last years, last six years, and if we break it down, central, you know, over 98%, you can see the, the amount of money, over 655 graduates, you see the scholarships, almost 8 million and 13 uh, going into the promise as a promise, which we saw earlier. Um, today, we go over to Westwood, 350 uh, graduates, 25, uh, over uh, 2 million, 500,000 in, um, in scholarships. You should see the grad rate will be right around the 96, 97% uh, range, 13 students with promises promise. You see the information from LPA, I won't read it to you. 
I'll just show it to you. That's right there. Again, that's in your handout. Uh, PSL High School, up around 98%. Centennial. The Titans, Treasure Coast High School. And uh, it's kind of interesting to see the competition now among the high schools, not only in sports, but in uh, graduation rates. Uh, and as I had shared with the board before Mosaic, 100% of the students that were in Mosaic um, graduated. And uh, a great program that they do there. And in our performance-based 68 students, uh, which we celebrated um, last week with the graduation. And what's important to remember here, too, as we shared before, um, with our graduation rate, we do not have a, uh, um, a diversity gap, any kind of a gap, but that we're at the same place with our Hispanic, our African American, our white students, or right around the 93% range, and that will continue into this year, and so we're very, very proud of that. When I talked to the principals last week and congratulated them, when we went into this school year, we didn't make any excuses. We knew that this was going to be a very, very challenging year, and um, there's a book that many people uh, are reading from Maxwell that says, Change Your World, and one of the things he says in there, that, you know, they say you can make progress or you can make excuses, but you can't do both, and so that was kind of our mantra. Um, there may be specific reasons when there may be unique challenges that we're facing, but we're going to uh, hit them head on. And um, Simon Sinek, I shared just with the principals as well, a crisis is the great revealer. And our country was in a crisis in our state, and, and you know, education was in a crisis. And really, what did it reveal about St. Lucie County? Um, Sinek says that uh, in a crisis, you see, the un you see things that people don't see before. And uh, what did we see about our district? Well, we saw the resiliency. We saw the courage. We saw the strong foundation that this district is really housed on, thus the solid as a rock is our, is our theme. And also with our principals, we shared it in, in a musical, um, Ashford and Simpson's song, um, Solid as a Rock. I'm not gonna play it today, um, but uh, to, the, to the disappointment of, the, of our team. But um, you know, it really showed uh, our culture. It showed our, our culture, it showed uh, the trust that we have for each other, knowing that we can get things done together. Again, no excuses were made, we just got after it. As the challenge escalates, the need for teamwork elevates. And this is something that I wanted to share with you. And they're in the room right now, and they really don't get their, their, their due, and many of the department heads are here as well. But we do district department surveys twice a year. And you have it, it's a handout that you have, and you can take it with you and look at that. Um, and you can see over the four or five year period, um, the surveys, and you can see this year, the overall average, it's on a scale of one to five. And uh, you know this was the highest that are this was the highest of 4.56. Anything when you get into the fours and you get above into the fours is really good. The one and two percent ratings are where people would disagree or highly disagree with something that's going on. And so we look at these very very closely um, to see what's the level of service that we're performing for our school centers. We always say that we're here to serve the schools. It's not the other way around. And so when you look at that and break it down, uh, can anybody read that? Uh, it's all good. It's all good. <laughs> And trust me, and, uh, and the board members, you have, uh, you have that hand out there as well. What we want to do is tie this into our guiding pillars. We have four guiding pillars here in the school district, teaching and learning, which is our main core, our main function, really followed by 1B, safe and caring schools, talent development, and then communication, community involvement, and uh, customer service. So I just want to go through that very, very quickly. Um, and this is really um, in our... Uh, our uh, Pillar number one, Office of Teaching and Learning, and you can see that we talked about it a moment where they had to really change to go to a hybrid model. Whether we had students at home or whether we had them in the building, we had to develop curriculums. We had to develop uh, units of study in Canvas. And, um, and uh, that's, you know, now we, we look at it and you say almost 1,000 units of study, but the work that went behind that is, uh, is just tremendous. Canvas is the platform um, that houses all of these things on the curriculum you saw that talent development I'll talk more about that in a moment we had to train our staffs up not just our teachers but everybody um, everybody in the district and CTE I'll hit that in a moment federal programs we stayed right there and we were able to get some extra dollars um, I'm gonna hit this a little this probably more detailed than I did the other the other programs because this is one of our core missions but um, you know they'd established the, the my school online the curriculum that it was at home uh, Dr. Mills, you're probably more familiar with it than anybody else in the room, as, as, except for the ones that developed it, because you were, you were involved in this daily. Um, we set expectations for our teachers. We collaborated with all the different departments here, and student assignment, and uh, HR, and, and everyone. 
You know, we always uh, had engaged the union, everything that we did. Um, you can see that it was a very smooth year working with our union partners uh, to work out any uh, challenges that we would have. And we got the DOE approval on this, as I mentioned before, the different units of study through the Canvas. Um, the curriculum highlights, these are platforms, uh, these are places, links that you can go to that our teachers would go to. We had to train them up so that they had access uh, to other opportunities for the, uh, for the students and the parents and the grandparents and the caregivers um, to monitor what was going on. As we just talked about, we're right in, just, just kicking off our summer school, our learning adventure camps. I shouldn't call it summer school, um, but our camps. We should put dinosaurs out in front of every school to attract them, like the Jurassic Park stuff. Um, and put that on our um, on our marquees. We had to figure out how to do that, Terrence. Get a real, get a get some stuff. And I'm thinking here now and getting off track. Um, the the camp sessions, as you're aware, in two week um, sessions. And uh, the middle and high school started last week with their um, credit recovery. And we also have our 21st century sites going on. Every year we have our um, early childhood conference. This year we did that virtually. Uh, we get a lot of tremendous support from the different agencies that are in the community. That was very successful. Uh, with our CTE, over fi almost $500,000 in grants. You can see the pre-apprenticeships at PSL High, the uh, pre-apprenticeship for outboard, outboard machinery, out, I'm sorry, ah, we'll just call it boat motors, um, over at uh, Centennial High School, and then pharmacy tech at Westwood, and then entrepreneur, entrepreneurship that's going on. We look at our numbers. Last year, there was a little bit of a dip um, in our, um, in our, in our uh, CTE and our industry certifications, and that's because some of the certifications have to be done in person, particularly in the area of uh, CPR and, and, and things where you'd have to have a live person in front of you. And you can see we're bouncing right back um, this year with that, one of the leaders in the state of Florida. You can see our new veterinary. We shared that the other day. The best story, uh, Mr. Kelly, was the one, you know, when you mentioned that your neighbor across the street, you know, was a student there and, and diagnosed um, you know, what he thought was wrong with the dog. I thought he just didn't feed it enough, but it was, it was more than that. And um, so, uh, you know, just what a, tr and that's just the representation of the f fantastic programs that we have going on all around. We were able to partner with the EDC, work very, very closely with them, and um, really to, uh, to just find our students' jobs. There was also a, um, the uh, TCBS, the tr uh, Treasure Coast Business Summit that was done. None of the board was able to make that. This is one of the highlights of the year for me personally because we were able to have all of our schools represented. They had their booths there, they were cooking, they had robots, they were drone flying, um, and I had an opportunity to speak to the group and um, several hundred people that were there. And one of our, and I mentioned this the other day, the young man out at Central High School who was in our um, aerodynamics class through Emory Riddle, currently right now um, is a, works for an insurance agency, makes $30 an hour, He's a um, FAA certified drone pilot, and uh, he flies the drones over buildings for an insurance company, and he makes $30 an hour, which averages over $60,000 a year. And what's also cool is he's a student, has a disability, um, a physical disability, and is still able to do that. And we recognized him in front of the crowd, and it was really personally one of the highlights of the year for me to be there and watch our students and our federal programs. Um, you can see that we did very well there, those competitive grants that are there. These are grants that we have to compete with other, um, with other school districts across the, uh, the country on, and we were able to get um, the SIG-4 grant, which helps uh, a few of our schools, the Magnet School grant, the, uh, the two CTE Career Pathway grants, um, Professional Development for the Arts, just to name a couple of those, our uh, Wallace, the elite program that we have going on. And then in Title I, these are the students that we serve and some of the, 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 the statistics that we have um, within that and the trainings and the programs that we do there. And then in secondary program highlights, uh, the SATs, the SATs, we do a, um, we get our, our students uh, tested in that um, grades 11 and 12, particularly at the 11th grade level. And this helps prepare them for college or the world of work, whichever direction that they go in. Um, the HBCU, we did that virtually this year. Thank uh, Kevin, uh, and we'll talk about that in a moment. And, and we were still able to get uh, over 300 students to attend. Next year, we'll get that back in person. and. Um, Moving over to ESC, unbelievable graduation rate. We're one of the tops in the state with our ESC students. And you can see there the numbers that's there, the 4.66. That's their, their, um, the uh, survey that was done among the schools. That survey's done with the principals. It's anonymous, so they can tell it like it is there and write comments. And you can see that uh, um, Bill's group is one of the highest rated um, departments that we have with some of the greatest challenges that we have. 
I don't know if you've ever seen the Project Search program, that these are where our students uh, go in to Martin Memorial and, and the tradition and they work, they work jobs there in, in the hospital. I had a chance two years ago to go in there and watch the students and the sense of pride uh, that it does for the students as well as, as the culture that it does for the hospital working with the students. And then many of them are able to get uh, jobs when they get out of there as well. Another thing that was important is the disproportionality um, that students within discipline, uh, we were not on any kind of a watch list uh, from the state of Florida. Our suspensions, particularly for African American males, where we were on three years ago, um, and we had to use funds from the, from the IDEA funds, 15% of those to address that issue. For the last two years, there's been no findings there, and those numbers, and we've shared that before with the board members. 100% um, compliant with Medicaid audit, that's a big, big deal as well. In fact, all of our audits were successful this year. Um, our executive directors, these are the uh, three supervisors of the principals. It's Dan and um, Patricia and Adrian. And you can see the number there, 4.98. They get ranked the highest from their principals. And that's kind of unique because the principals do the evaluations of them, and the principals, they don't know. Um, you know, it's anonymous, so you don't know who that's coming from. But that shows the level of support. The other reason that you all receive is the least amount of phone calls that you get from parents is because they take care of it. And then when you do get that call, it'll go to them, and we'll find out what, you know, usually there's two sides to every story, and the truth sometimes in the middle. They do a remarkable job with that, and can't uh, stress that enough um, uh, for what they do, working alongside with, uh, with Dr. Prince in that as well. They report directly to, to Dr. Prince, and we have weekly meetings with them. Um, so uh, a valuable, valuable service, worth the weight in gold there. Assessment accountability, this is our testing, and it goes on from June 14th to June 11th. What was unique about this year is that we had to uh, be very, very creative in bringing back our my school students and keep them separate from our regular students when we got into the heavy testi testing season the last few months. And uh, great job by it, but, but we're doing assessments in, in, uh, throughout the year and uh, sending information up to the state of Florida. And uh, Daryl, we didn't lose a pallet this year, right? We've, we've, we've never lost anything. We've got everything up there. And again, they're behind the scenes. You really don't see them um, out in front anywhere. IT, one of the greatest challenges we had was in IT in Terrence's department. And uh, you can just look at those numbers. I shared those a few moments ago, but that is just remarkable. And we have to remember, too, that we were competing with the whole country and maybe the whole world, but particularly the country, on trying to get computer devices into our schools because everybody else was doing the same thing. The same thing goes true when we were trying to get our PPE uh, equipment in there. So you can see what we've done, and I hit that a little bit earlier. Um, IT, again, you can see that uh, we had multiple dashboards for tracking the students and the teachers, and uh, forms for laptop distribution, food service, VPK, Mosaic. You know, everything changed, and just, you know, we were able to adapt to that, we were able to pivot to that, um, and IT did a remarkable job. Student assignment, uh, again, another one of those uh, groups that are behind the scenes. You know, you come in, you turn right, that's right there. Um, but we really didn't have any interruption of service to our community. Uh, we had a lot of increase in traffic, particularly with home education numbers, and they were able to meet that need. And again, to uh, work in partnership with community organizations uh, to bring supplies. You know, when students come in, students can get supplies from our, um, our department, from uh, our um, student assignment department for students that are in need, and they work with different agencies, some of the sororities and sorority, uh, fraternities and sororities that we talked about before as well um, to make sure we take care of our students. Business services, we had a perfect audit this year. A plus rating for, uh, for our COPS, our certificates for participation. A rating for our sales tax revenue bonds. Um, stable outlook by Fitch, that's all important. Those are, those are important things. Um, we'll get to hear from uh, Michelle in a month when we talk about our new budget. And then our district wellness program, taking care of our, our employees, 16.2% 16 per, 16 increase in participation over the previous year. We had the vaccinations and those things. Um, guiding pillar number two is safe and caring schools. This is really um, our COVID-19 response. And um, we brought Bridget, is Bridget in here? There's Bridget, and where's Bill? Is Bill here? All right, Bill's over there too. Uh, and so Bill took on working with the adults and added responsibility. Bridget came in really to establish our, uh, we have our safety manual that's right here, the 70 page one. Working with our principals, getting the information, working, you know, just a nonstop, 24-7 job. Um, whenever we talk, we joked with the principals, whenever they got a call from Bridget, that's who they didn't want to hear from because they knew she was going to tell them 
uh, that you're going to have to quarantine some students and maybe this student tested positive. Uh, Bill would deal with the um, adults. We had a well-oiled machine. We kept our students safe. We kept our faculty safe. We kept our staff members safe due to their efforts and their department efforts. And that's no small feat. And that will continue to remain in place um, this year as well. Again, this, this is part of that, the COVID-19 response that the district had. And I talked about that a little bit in my opening comments because that was one of the main, one of my three top goals that I had going in. SEL, we talked a little bit about that, 6,000 trainings. This was, uh, again, we developed uh, and established that department and uh, worked with uh, districts, not only here in our own staffs, but across the state. They were asked also to present at two national conferences. We did virtual nights for families to engage them about SEL and what's going on. Safety and security, I have to put this in here because Brian loves this, but right now what his department's doing, they have a, they have a 424 question book that they have to go out to every school site and do an assessment and it takes it's about that thick and uh, they're doing it right now and uh, they do a remarkable job of keeping our students safe um, as well they got $130,000 uh, this year a grant from the DOE the building numbering project when you go around now to the school centers you'll see the numbers that are on there and that helps us in case there is uh, an emergency or some kind of an incident on campus where it's easily identifiable as to what building we're talking about and also worked with our uh, emergency management plan on new procedures, reunifications, bomb threats, those kinds of things. Child nutrition services. Um, Deborah, are you here? I saw Deborah. Deborah, I apologize. I did not mention her at the principal's meeting, and that has bugged me since then. So now you are getting more. Um, you're getting your own moment. I will pause uh, for you. You will turn red now. And, um, but if you look there, Five million meals have been served this past year. Five million meals, 400,000 grab and goes. And that's continuing right now, the grab and goes. We're doing that and started that already um, for those that are in need in our community. Uh, we trained our um, you know, 375 highly trained, nationally certified employees. Uh, a lot of people, that's behind the scenes again, but the families and the community members, they benefit from this. And uh, the last bullet's real important. Three quarters of all the items are produced from scratch right here. I guess that means they cook them, yep. right, from scratch. So um, great job with that department. Custodial services, their world changed. Uh, you know, not just a routine. Cleaning of schools, which is so important, but then we had a COVID response team uh, that was a custodial coordinator, the area managers. You know, whenever those uh, buildings, every, you know, whenever the schools had to be clean or classrooms developed, you know, came on when there was um, uh, students that tested positive or staff members that tested positive. Um, they went out 547 times to ensure that, that uh, those buildings were clean, working on weekends, working in the evenings. Again, um, uh, a great group of folks. And um, Carolyn, is she here? Okay, Carolyn's in the schools. But Carolyn coordinates that and um, again, unsung heroes, our custodial folks, uh, our maintenance folks that keep our schools our PPE, uh, you know, warehouse, the PPE, this is the ordering. That's what I was talking about before when we had to order all the masks, all the sanitizers. We've got 55 gallon drums at every school where we would, so we would never run out of hand sanitizer and, uh, and we'll keep those there as well. The facilities, making sure that um, we're doing the upgrades in the school centers, the bipolar, as we've mentioned to you guys before, um, we're gonna be doing the HVAC system in the next, over the next several months and, and, and years um, at our school centers. And we'll do a uh, we'll do a five-year capital plan update for the board in uh, in the fall as to where we are with some of these, and you can just see um, rekeying the schools and the barriers that they put up. Student services, um, we talked a little bit about before, but making sure we we're addressing the, the needs of the students, and uh, we increase the staff members there, particularly social workers and mental health counselors to work with that. Twenty-five schools were designated as the model PBIS. We didn't make a big, we didn't you know this year we didn't we didn't uh, really. Con I guess celebrate that as much as we should have. I think the next slide shows that. But these are our schools that are PBS model schools. And uh, there's 25 of them in the district and uh, great job that they do, great job that Bill's shop and his team does uh, with working with them as well. And then transportation, they saved over $500,000 this year just changing their routes. Jacunte, um, since he's come in there has really transformed the department. Um, I think, you know, Again, one of our, probably some of the things that board members heard from before was from transportation a lot. 
that has gone down significantly um, under his leadership uh, and, and the team that they work there, our seatbelt safety campaign things. And they're out on the road today uh, uh, bringing the kids into summer school. Legal department, another one of those ones you really don't want to hear from them because if you don't hear from them, that means there's no lawsuits going on, which is a good thing. Um, but uh, really the, the, the COVID-19, a lot of is issues that are out there working with the school centers and they're providing the staff just, you know, in, in time information is what's needed. Um, you know, there could be disputes among parents and child custody and these kinds of things and they'll call the legal department Im immediately and it all gets worked out again. F number three, wrapping it up, talent development and growth. None of this can happen unless we train our staffs. You saw a little bit about, uh, not a little, you saw a lot um, of what we're going to be doing in the future. Uh, but we have our help desk and this was to help our folks to be uh, successful in whatever it was that they were taking on new. Uh, the website was developed. The, uh, a lot of multiple, uh, a lot of Facebook live events that our team would do to go on and help members of our community or help our own staffs as well. Uh, talent development for the leaders, you can see it there um, as well as what we were trying to do with our uh, monthly tech support, the build out of our tracking systems, the equity and bias training courses for administrators that continues. And then teacher development for staff members. We had over, again, I mentioned this before, as part of uh, the goals uh, to make sure that uh, we're training everybody up on what was a unique year. And what do we got here? Tech giveaways. This was our uh, tech, the tech conference, which was a virtual tech conference for our teachers uh, to, and, and staff to, uh, to, to, uh, to, to uh, sharpen the saw on their technological skills. HR, you just heard from, from Raphael. We, you know, we don't want to underscore the fact that we're one of the best places to work for four consecutive years net. now. You saw um, our recruitment strategies. We opened this year without a vacancy. We either had a certified teacher or a long-term sub there. We didn't have a hard time um, recruiting during the pandemic, and that has increased every year because of what he said, which we really can't miss. We're branding the school district so it's a place where people will want to work, and that's because of a culture and how we treat employees, uh, and they'll stay. If, they've, if their voice is heard, nine times out of ten, they're going to stay in a school center, even though it may be a tougher school. If their voice is heard, they hear that they're being supported uh, by their principal, they have a saying things that are going on, um, and that um, they have input and that we're developing them. So um, great job in there. Pillar number four, finally, our fourth pillar would be communication. It's really communication, and then we have community involvement and customer servant, service. And uh, Lil, uh, Lydia's shop was, was very, very busy. And uh, we talked a little bit about that before on what they were getting, in, the information that they were getting out. We've increased Lucy Link now to over 30,000 subscribers, um, which is great. So each week when you look at that, you'll see the different things that are going on in the school centers. The positive news stories that are go out, we've shared that with the board members. Um, the media campaigns, Kindergarten Roundup, the media services. Um, you can see the different projects that they've done. It's a 24-7 job because um, every day she gets contacted by the media about something that's going on. Fortunately, for the last few weeks, it's been very, very positive on things that are occurring and we're able to, um, and because of personal relationships that she has developed uh, with the local media, particularly the TV media, um, you know, they know that they'll call us at any time and, and, and I'll go on or she'll go on or somebody, will, or somebody will talk to them and answer questions or brag on the school district. So great job there. This is Mr. Perry, we talked about the HBCU, the college fairs, we were able to do that. He coordinated all the graduations. He's a, my liaison for the United Way and different community organizations. Uh, he, uh, he and Bridget developed the guidelines for a band and chorus with COVID and uh, also the Night of the Stars, which went virtual, uh, a lot of things behind the scenes uh, that Kevin does and um, does a great job. And then this is Marty really working again with our, with our different agencies. Um, our government agencies, Fort Pierce, St. Lucie County, and Port St. Lucie, and the uh, intergovernmental relations. You know, right now we're working with the folks behind the scenes. Uh, Marty was instrumental in uh, state legislation, particularly with impact fees. Um, there was a lot of things that came out in the beginning, and uh, he was a guru, and uh, so they were reached out to him from Tallahassee to try to get the better language in there, and better language was put in uh, regarding the use of impact fees. Um, the referendum update, I think that, uh, I just want to show this re to you real quick. Lydia's going to help me here. I'm going to go live to the page. Okay, so this is our page that's there on the webpage, the referendum. We'll be meeting with the committee. You can see the committee appointees that are here. 
I, I believe we meet with them in August, the next time that we'll meet. And all the information that's there, but when we go down and we, and we, we click on to the, this is, um, you can click on and see how much dollars went for our teachers, how much went for um, our police officers, our SROs. Uh, the mental health here, you can see that we were able to um, have, t we have 20 now um, social workers, four behavior specialists, can anybody else see that? 10 behavior techs and uh, three certified school counselors. Troy, can you see that? No, not really. Okay. Um, okay, so I'm doing that without glasses. All right. And then here, um, when we click on our, our um, dollars for the performing arts, we can go right on and, and, and go to a school. I'll just, um, let's see who we hear. This looks like Westgate, and we can click on and see that Westgate was allocated $9,203. They've spent $9,203. Uh, whatever, whatever it was to, to increase the arts, it could be in music, performance, equipment. Uh, what do we got here? This is St. Lucie West. So this is updated. This is uh, um, updated each month. By our um, by our business department, and um, and so that information is there again to be totally transparent uh, with our community members on where the dollars go, and we'll meet with uh, your community appointees um, uh, next month or in August. I believe in August is when we're scheduled to meet again, and then uh, that's just around the corner in 2022 the renewal of that, and we'll have some conversations about that in the future. To wrap it all up. These here, this was a virtual photograph of our principals at one of our principal meetings. And today I've talked uh, mostly about the district staff because I already congratulated our principals and talked about them. But nothing would have happened in this district and have the, the, the year that we've had if we didn't have outstanding leaders in our school centers. And, uh, and so, you know, I've commended them and congratulated them. But uh, when you see them, just say thank you. Because what I, we tell them, we tell people to do their jobs, you get workers. When we trust people to do their jobs, we get leaders. And we have great leadership because of the trust that we put in them. They trust us that we're going to get them the stuff that they need. If we're not getting it to them, they let us know. But we're here to service and to serve them. Uh, but they're the forefront. They're the, they're the crew that makes everything that's happened. And why this year, that even though it was our most challenging year, to me it was the most successful year that I've ever been involved in because we were able to totally transform this school district because of the firm foundation that was established uh, years ahead. You saw Queen Townsend on there earlier, uh, you know, by folks that were here years ahead to establish the foundation that we've built on. Um, so when the, this crisis had hit, and we're still in it, we're not looking, you know, we still monitor everything very, very closely. Um, but I'll put this up against anywhere in the country as to the year that we've had because of the people um, that we empower to get the job done, many of them that are here right now, and I, I do want to say thank you um, to them. That's why I took as much time as I did, because it's important that uh, they know um, that I appreciate and I know that the school board appreciates what they do, even though we don't see it all the time. The fact that you don't hear about it or get calls, you know that it's working. Um, and again, uh, a remarkable year, and uh, our true found, you know, our, you know, things our culture was revealed, our trust was revealed, how we handle adversity um, was revealed and what we do about that. And we're not perfect as a district, um, you know, but uh, we're on the right track and uh, so very, very proud of the job that they've done. And uh, we'll say all the nice things today because at midnight tonight, today ended and it's a new year beginning July 1st and uh, we'll start, uh, we've already started for next year and the challenges for next year. But just wanna say thank you to the team and thank you to the board for your support. This is a, um, what I've shared in review, and again, I'm doing this for Mrs. Richardson and Jack, Mr. Kelly, um, is that uh, my evaluation will be in two weeks, and if any board members wanna sit down and chat privately, that's fine. If not, you know, it's, it goes before the board, and the evaluation really is evaluation uh, of me, but I'm only, uh, we're only successful because of the people in the room and the people that are in the school center, so it's really evaluation of our school district, which is why we do it this way. And again, we gave you the, uh, the yearbook um, to, to get into the details of it. it uh, again, it's well done. Uh, a lot of our teams just saw it for the first time today as well, right, Lydia? We kind of kept this as a secret. So they're out, because I, I was w looking at those that had stole a copy, um, and, and uh, maybe, we'll, maybe we'll charge money for it. We'll share this again, like I said, with our, with our community agencies. Uh, we'll share it with our, our um, 
PSL, St. Lucie County, and Fort Pierce government, the community agencies that are out there, um, different groups and organizations uh, that I meet with and that you all meet with. So this will be something that we can share. Thank you, Madam Chair. Well, Mr. Superintendent, all the words you said are absolutely true, but it does start at the top. And we applaud you as well. You have surrounded yourself with a phenomenal, phenomenal team. And um, I think, board members, we need to stand and give this group a standing ovation. Y'all can clap too for yourself. team before oh you couldn't hear me oh well I didn't have a teacher voice either so you, you just don't know how many people you reach from where you sit every day and how many people depend on you I mean the numbers that you were sharing are phenomenal it, it's just hard to imagine the hundreds of thousands of contacts and influences you make on people's lives but you as a team rock I can't tell you how much we appreciate you. Thank you for everything you do, every single moment of every single day. All of our children, all of our parents, all of us, it's just phenomenal, so thank you. That's a lot of information to dissect and, and go with, but fabulous, fabulous information. Um, you know, and I, I, I've heard it said a lot this year that you can't let a crisis go to waste. Well, we had a good crisis, and by golly, it did not go to waste in St. Lucie Public Schools. Through the work of everyone here, Mr. Gent, your leadership, day after day, um, working with a good board, it's just really, really, been a good year in what could have been a tragedy of a year and has been a tragedy of a year in many places in, in the United States. So we are indeed fortunate to have your leadership, um, to have such a phenomenal team working with us day in and day out. So thank you as well. Um, did you have any board members have any comment or about the, what we've heard? I want to okay. say, I, Mr. I Kelly? Agree. 100% with everything that you said, and uh, I applaud you for getting up and speaking to staff like that. That's great. Uh, the ones that I do want to say one thing that uh, uh, being probably the oldest person in this building, uh, I look at things with, with an old school thing, and, uh, and I, I know I'm going to get uh, looks from uh, Dr. Mills because uh, what I'm going to talk about, because she says I never smile. Look, look at the smile on her face. But I can't smile like that, and it's something that God gives certain people. And uh, I was in yesterday, and I, we, you know, we've been at a lot of uh, graduations, and we, we've been around, and I was in yesterday during lunchtime and for a couple hours, and I was in the building, and I uh, saw you, Mr. Sanchez, and a few other people the other day, and we're just walking around at lunchtime and watching everybody. And uh, let me put it this way. If, if you have a, a car, and it can be brand new like yours, Mrs. Holy. Uh, if it's dirty, if the car's dirty, it doesn't just, a shiny car always runs better, doesn't it, Wayne? When, when your car's clean, it just feels like it runs better it, because it's clean and shiny, you know? And that's how I feel about this building. I, I just walk around yesterday, maybe because the masks are, are gone or whatever, but everybody was smiling. I mean, I 90% of the people that I saw, I, Dr. Mills were, had a big smile on her face, and it just makes you feel so good, because I can't do that. And they got a good reason to smile, because this is the best school district ever. I mean, I just, uh, I've been around uh, staffs and, and, and government officials for 25, 26 years, 
and served on so many in, right here in this area in the Treasure Coast and looked at other staffs and things. And there's ways to measure them and uh, we won't get into it. We've got a eight hour full day coming up where we're gonna discuss things. Maybe you can discuss at the end of this and tell us what we're gonna do. I've got some things here that I wanted to mention, but it's just the car is shining right now and I just wanna keep it shining. And it, uh, what a great year, what a great staff. and. Uh, and Wayne, you, you know, it's an old New York saying, again, I'm the oldest guy in the building. Many of you never heard this. If you're from New York, you might have. But the fish stinks from the head. That's an old, old saying. You never heard that, Troy? Never heard it, right? Well, it's an old saying. I don't know whether it's related with gangsters and mafia or it's just New York, but it's an old, old saying. Anybody ever heard that? Anybody? The fish stinks from, ah, there you go, Marty. Yeah, it's true. Also, it's the opposite way. Uh, if the fish, the head is good, if the head's thinking great and, and leads the other schools of fish well, uh, the fish, when you catch them, they taste real good, you know? And our head fish here is doing a great job, and I'm really, really <laughs> proud of you, buddy. You really are. Now, now we're going to get into one other thing. We saw, we saw a side of Mr. Gent last week. Uh, Troy and I were at, a, what do we call that? meeting we had, administrative, what, what was it? Superintendent Summit, it's where we bring our principals and our team leaders back in uh, yeah. at the end of the year. I call it a good time, it was yeah, a show. Was <laughs> and uh, of course, Mrs. Hawley and, and Dr. Mills were away getting information for us, but uh, Mr. Ingersoll and I were there, and uh, this guy's an entertainer. Uh, you, how many were there at that? Oh, you guys were all there? You saw what he did, okay. And, uh, the, uh, highlighted the, of the whole morning was when you were gonna jump off the stage and you decided not to. I wanna tell you, Dr. Prince was rooting for you to jump off the stage. <laughs> I said, like a five foot stage and you didn't do it and I'm glad. The only thing is Mr. Ingersoll really showed you up because he put his cape on, jumped up on the stage and jumped off the stage. And everything no, that he said off. about you. <laughs> yeah, you did, you did too. He, yes, he did. He was good. Let me, let me elaborate a little bit. I get it. But uh, you did a great job, Wayne, and uh, just shows uh, everybody supported you and the way everybody cheered for you. And uh, we are solid as a rock. And I'm, I'm proud to be, I'm glad I ran for school board. Uh, it really was as good as everybody said it was going to be. They said you'd have a, you're going to love it. The, the school couldn't have a better school board. They're great. You got Mr. Gent there. The whole crew is great. They're all right. And this was said to me by leaders of not just this county, but other counties told me how great this school board was and I was gonna enjoy myself if I got elected. And I do, and I'm gonna try to s smile more Dr. Mills, I will, I really will. But you guys are great, keep the shine, keep the smile going. I'm so happy and I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna give one award out right now. The smile that I had, the greatest smile every time I look at her, but Dr. Helen Wild, and she did it today to me. I look around and she smiles right at me, makes me feel good. Keep the smile going. Everybody watch her get that smile going. So thank you for letting me talk. Forget the fish stinks from the head. I won't ever use that again. But <laughs> you do a great job, Wayne. I'm proud of everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kelly. Jack, yeah. I, I certainly do appreciate you, Jack. Um, we've been around a while. I look around this room and I see Helen, Bill, Lydia, Marty, and um, we used to go to the city of Port St. Lucie, and, and, and um, it was uncomfortable. And Jack, you always supported us, but there were some board members there that really wanted our butts in a sling, and almost, you know, split the split the county governments, split the school board, and, and split the cities, and it was very uncomfortable for a period of time. And um, don't ever take, uh, you know, things for granted because um, you guys are superstars. Um, I look at basketball teams and you know, have superstars on them and they have all these egos and they, they split. And it takes a great coach to put them together and say, hey, you know, let's work together as a team and, and, and do that because that's what we have here. You know, I look around and each one of you have different departments and, and you far exceed our expectation. And we're so grateful for that. And as a board, we have to understand that and, and understand our role as, 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 as policymakers and, and um, community activists that, that they have to do their job and, and they're the leaders. 
because, you know, we just look good. You know, people see us and it's like, I don't do anything. You know, I just got elected. You guys are the ones that do the work and, and, and we're, we're so grateful for that. And Wayne, for, for what you've done, I, again, I can go to community meetings now and, and Marty can go there and we don't have issues. We can sit down and talk and it's because of the relationships that you guys have made and particularly you, Wayne, that you know, city, uh, city managers and county managers, you, know, you can sit and talk and, and get things accomplished. And, uh, and Jack, you know what I'm talking about because it, it, it's a, it shows and there's confidence. There's confidence amongst our staff, our support staff, and um, all the way from our bus drivers to our principals. So thank you again. Um, words, words cannot say enough. I can't echo, can't echo enough what uh, Mr. Ingersoll just said. Do not take it for granted. We got a great family here. Don't take it for granted. I've got a long list of things to say, but I'll try to shorten it. First of all, thank you. This is something that we can take all around this community. We have the facts here. Outside of my Bible, this will be my next book for a while, okay? <laughs> Especially with an election coming up in 22. But thank you for the knowledge you know, because we can share this knowledge, you know, and we need to study it. I encourage the board members, study this book, right? Because um, our community need to know what we're doing. And we just cannot share it enough in order for them to understand, because it's something about the human mind, it just kind of defaults to negativity. And so you gotta help educate people is what we need to do as educators in the community. And this book is gonna do that. It's so um, thorough, you know. Um, the presentation, Mr. Gent, was very thorough and was very phenomenal. And I, I hope that if, if it's not in there, then we need to take the book and we need to take the presentation and really get it as much as we can inside of us so that we can share the good things that's going on. You know, I'm one that always says there's room for improvement. I'm not perfect, you're not perfect, you're not perfect, but we sure are pressing toward the mark. And to be able to say that brings me great comfort and great joy and you, I feel as if all of you are like my family after this particular session, you know, and this is how we need to continue to be. Um, that, that book, Change the World, did we get one? If I did, I'm, no, I'll, I'll shame nope. on me. We'll get, I, them. we'll get them for the board. Okay, I'm gonna say shame on me, maybe I got no, one that didn't. Yeah. Okay. We haven't given them out. Um, a couple of people bought them. I had one given to me by one of our principals who read it. And uh, so um, well, I like we'll to get buy it to the board. One we'll get we'll get them for the board. Okay, um, I'll give you a good deal. Yes, I love I love John Maxwell too. So that's that's a good thing. Um, I was interested in knowing, and and it doesn't have to be shared now. You may need to go back and um, look at it. But I just wanted to know how the vaccines were going along with the students right now. If parents are responding to it, you know what n the numbers are. And that's something that I wanted to put out that I like to get information okay. back. Uh, I really appreciate um, when you said, Mr. Gent, about the summer uh, school, calling it summer camp, because we're running a summer camp right now as well. When I say we, our organi organization Save Our Children. And what we realize more than ever before, that in the summertime, the kids wanna have fun and they don't wanna think that they're going to school. So we slip it in when they get there, you know, with the thank you for the spark packets. We do that every, twice a week and working through that. Uh, so we slip in the academics, but to be, for kids in the summertime, for it to be called a camp and something that they can really have fun at, they anticipate it and then you bring in the academics along with this. So I appreciate it when you said that. Um, 
Expulsions, I want to bring up expulsions. We have not had an expulsion come before us uh, and to the two new board members in years. And when I first came on in 2010, it, every month was expulsions. And most of them, I would say 99% of them were African American males. We have not had an expulsion in years. You have no idea how much I appreciate that. And um, so we have been changing our world, our school world. And, um, and, and I appreciate everything that each one of you are doing. This book broke down all departments. And, and you know, thank you for each of you in your several different places. I started listing down the different departments as we were going through it. Was it this book or was it the presentation? Is it in here as well? Yeah, it's a okay. presentation was, was a summary oh, of what's no, in the book. Oh, no, it was in the So it's here. a summary of what was in there. Mm -hmm. The complaints, I hardly get any complaints right now from parents, different departments, not just the expulsion, not get, transportation don't hear from anybody anymore as far as complaints so um, yeah knock on wood <laughs> I mean not to say that I don't get any but it's very seldom now that says that you are doing a tremendous job in your departments and as a board member I certainly do appreciate I we do have a phenomenal school system I'm very proud proud of St. Lucie County Public Schools, and I will tell it wherever I go, thank you so much for your work. And just a reminder, board members, in order for that to keep going, that's where we come in. We're the activists, we're the cheerleaders for the school district. So to take all of this phenomenal information that we've been given, there should be no misconceptions in our community as long as we continue to let everyone know all the good work that's going on here. So, Mr. Superintendent, that concludes your presentations, and we have no other business to come before us today other than as a reminder, you all, that we our July 13th board meeting will be at 9 o'clock in the morning. Thank you, Ms. Harrison, for sending that out yesterday with all of the information on it. Um, July will be a busy month for us with two board meetings, um, our master board training, um, and anything else that comes in between. So I look forward to seeing all of you at the very early, latest on July 13th, 9 a.m. right here. Thank you so much. And again, thanks to all of you. I know giving up time to be here today was some of you I know, are, I got this to do and that to do. And that's absolutely how this school district runs so well. So. Go, be blessed, thank you for everything, and we are adjourned.